Welcome to Morning Coffee and Mimosas. I'm Christina. And I'm Joe. We are a father-daughter duo. We come here Sunday mornings, but you can come here anytime you please. We banter about life, about business, and we do it over coffee and mimosas. I like that. See, and since we're not on video normally, but... (laughs) Yeah, this is our first video. (laughs) This is it. So So, welcome (laughs) listeners. We are uh, super excited today because we have with us Ray and Zach from Your Advocate Alliance with us here today. And we are super excited because this is a father-son duo that actually inspired us to get started and do this. So Welcome, guys. Thank you for being with us. Well, thank you for having us. So before we get started, do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about your Advocate Alliance and what you all do? What do we do, pups? Uh, well, <laughs> we do very little, but, but we've attracted quite the audience. <laughs> you have. You have. You have. <laughs> My dad is, is an avid subscriber, and now I'm a new subscriber myself. I, I, I guess realistically, what we do is we we try to leverage my 43 years in the retail automobile business uh, to help people level the playing field so that they can appreciate and understand what they're about to walk into if they walk into an automobile dealership. And uh, it seems to have caught on, I believe. Come on, man. You yes. got more words in you. I got faith in you. No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're the one with the marketing. This is true. I was just going to say, it, it was pretty cool. Like YAA was this idea of my dad always helping me go through the car buying process. And I have an older sister, obviously my dad's daughter. And, you know, like every time we ran into issues with our cars and whether we were buying one or if we were like taking it to get the tires replaced or something, whatever it was like, you know, who we were calling or taking with us, it was my dad. And I had just gotten a new iPhone. I guess this was like December of 2019, I was going on a big trip. So I got one of the new iPhones so they make sure I could take cool photos um, as I was traveling. And for some reason, my dad agreed to sit down in a chair and I took a video of him talking about cars. And, um, and the idea was like that experience I had as a kid growing up, having him there to support me. Um, how could we try and give that to other people? And for some reason, people started watching him talk into this camera and it was incredible. It was really, really cool to see. I love that Wonderful. so much. So Ray, you you are everybody's dad now. Uh, <laughs> I twenty thousand people's father. <laughs> I, I I went I went from uh, being Rain Man, is what people used to call me at the dealership, um, to being uh, pops. Um, suddenly, I am everybody's pops or somebody's uncle mm-hmm. or, uh, as Bruce Arians used to used to always say when he coached the Cardinals. You just want to be somebody's favorite uncle that you want to have a drink with. Well, I, I am having a drink with you today. We, we probably should have told you that you are able to drink on this podcast. Well, <laughs> Morning I, coffee it, and mimosas. Well, I, I, I guess I could have broken open a bottle of wine, but I don't know why I do that. It's all good. So we're, we're drinking with pops today and Zach. Well, cool. I like that. So it has been, um, I think, super exciting. I've been going through the car buying process myself. So listeners, what you're going to hear today is a little bit, we're obviously give the floor to Ray and Zach to talk a little bit more about how they started YAA. Um, You heard a little bit about why they started YAA. And then, you know, talk about like the entrepreneurial journey that you've had and how you may, because I'm sure like myself, there are many listeners that are, um, probably having a little bit of anxiety about an upcoming purchase of a car. Um, The most exciting thing is getting a new car. The process of getting a new car can be a total pain in the ass. But there are no cars now. (laughs) Right. And right now is a super unique time. So we'll um, let Zach and Ray share a little bit about how you can engage with them to get more information and um, just some tips that might be helpful as you're going through that process today. If I may, uh, you you said like getting a new car is such an exciting thing, and it's just well the process destroys it. It does. It, it, yes. it absolutely does. And and I originally got into the car business in 1977, and I don't know I might have been doing it for five or six months, and already at that point I understood that that the whole concept was so flawed that it just 
it didn't make it fun for anyone. And when somebody's spending that kind of money, they, they should have a good time doing it. Um, there's a lot of cliches in the car business. One of the cliches is the feel of the wheel seals the deal. So in other words, you need to get your, your prospective customer to actually test drive a car and hopefully they'll fall in love with it. And I used to instruct my sales staff that I, I would always tell them, if you give them a good show, they'll part with their dough. So that, that <laughs> was it. my say. Uh, and the whole concept, at least in my mind, was it, it had to be fun. It, it, I, I mean, I used to tell the customers, I'll, I'll put on a show for you. There's no drink minimum. There's no, there's no cover. Uh, at, but at the end, if you've had a good enough time, you have to buy the damn car. That's all <laughs> I'm going to ask. So that's how, that's how the, the concept for me started way back when, that we needed to change the way the process works. I love that. Do you feel like, right, the process has changed at all from, you know, the earlier days in the business to seeing what's happening now? Not enough. <laughs> um, you know, I, I joke with Zach that I don't think we'll see the amount of change that I would like to see in my lifetime. Hopefully he can affect that type of change uh, in his lifetime. But it, it hasn't happened quick enough for my liking. Um, there's still too many old school dealerships out there that that just make it uncomfortable and unfair for the consumer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Christine, I don't know if you had this experience with your dad um, in his line of work, but, you know, my dad obviously was trying to make it fun for the customer, but I never got to see my dad growing up because he was like having to put on that show. And to me, as I was growing up, I really resented that. I didn't see him. And so I didn't really get to know him on like that level that you would anticipate or expect as a kid growing up, especially when you're around your mom all the time. Right. Um, and so then as I got older and realized like my dad wasn't, I shouldn't be resentful towards my dad. I should be resentful towards like this gimmicky show he has to mm -hmm. put on. And then his whole compensation structure is tied to like, how much gross profit can I make? Because then I make more money and then we can go on a family vacation. Like that system to me seemed really broken a little bit past backwards. Um, and so like, it was as I matured and got older that I was able to have a better relationship with my dad because like the resentment was shared. It was what he wanted to change too, is exactly what mm -hmm. I wanted to change. And I don't know if you ever experienced that. It, like as you built your relationship with your father, like it evolves over time because you have a better perspective on what's actually affecting their lives and your lives combined. You right. dad can probably relate to that a little bit better than I could. Well, it, it's, it's interesting, uh, Zach, because I'm one of six kids and my father was a salesman, you know, a full-time job. And he taught flying at night and weekends uh, at nights on nights and weekends. And my mother, you know, was raising six kids and my mother's father lived with us. So we had like nine people in the house. So I didn't really have my parents. I, I they were great, <laughs> but I didn't have my parents as you, um, no one came to my, I ran track. I'm not a sports guy, but I ran track. Nobody ever came. I think my mother came once and I actually tripped and fell in front of the, <laughs> her, in front of the thing. And she never came again. Yeah. And then, <laughs> oh, no. had luck. He it embarrassed her. <laughs> I think I was so nervous that mom was there. And then She's I like, I this is why up. we don't come see you, Joey. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> you know, and then a little brief story, I won't, uh, monopolize it, but I play the guitar and, and, um, I'm in a band now. But I was also in a, in a band in high school, not the high school band, but, you know, uh, with mm -hmm. friends. And we played the senior variety show. You know, it, it was a big deal. And we got we auditioned and we got this variety show. And the night my parents came, we played the first song and it's some Allman Brothers song. And then the, my stupid lead guitarist was a real wise guy. And he kept turning the volume up and the principal came out onto the stage and told him to turn it down. And of course... He turned it up and no lie. My parents are in the audience for the second show. I'm on the left side. I'm playing the guitar and the curtain closes. They shut the power down to the, <laughs> to the stage. <laughs> I was thinking, this is great. I know my parents are never at anything I do. And I've played one song. <laughs> and I remember at the intermission, I went, I went out, I was so upset. And I can remember my dad going, Oh, it was good. It was good. <laughs> So I know what you mean. And so growing, uh, translating that when we, we had our three kids, I had my own business, but I, I made it a point. I went to 
all of their games. I went to everything. I just wanted to be there to the point that I remember one time I was going to her practices and she said, you know, dad, you don't have to come to every, like, because <laughs> I was just now an annoying dad that was showing up. But I think but it's, it, you take it every for granted. Other generation, right. I mean, it's kind of like, you, right. You, you do. I think it's, um, it's very much a result of like, I probably took for granted how much my parents were always there and how much they were so involved with everything uh, because it's all, you know, and you were probably trying to compensate compensating for the, fact. yeah, <laughs> for the experience that you had yeah. knowing that like, man, you really wanted your parents there and they weren't able to be. So right. I think we, we get it. And probably this is, this must be so nice for you guys now, Ray and, and Zach to be able to have something that you're doing together. And, and Zach, you're able to uh, talk about a purpose driven business that, you're you're thinking about all the people that maybe you'll be able to impact their childhood or fatherhood experience by giving them a little bit more time or at least making the whole experience a little bit better. Definitely. And and talking about like kind of overcompensating, um now kind of reconciling why my dad wouldn't let me live with him again this post, most recent summer. When we launched the business last year, um I actually he has a one bedroom condo and I I I slept in my bedroom, which was the living room couch. And you wouldn't let me do that this summer, dad. So I think, I think it's because we overcompensated. We were making up for lost time. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I just remember in the summer of 2020, you showing up like 10 or 15 days before my birthday saying your roommates here. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're in a much healthier place now. Um, <laughs> yeah, you have your own spots. You guys work together when when you do, and that's yeah. very healthy. <laughs> but no, I mean, you're spot on, Christina. Like, it's it's incredibly rewarding. And I know my dad and I both see it, the impact that our work has in terms of people in the industry. So people that were in my dad's prior role, getting time back in their day. And of course, the millions of people each year that go through the car buying process we know we're barely scratching the surface of helping them mm -hmm. have a better, more confidence inspiring experience and a more efficient experience. Um, and you know, it's not to get like too deep in the weeds, but my dad and I talk about this all the time. And sometimes even on our live streams that we do each week, um, my mom was a teacher, like a special ed teacher. Um, and she passed away, I guess, almost four a years ago, over four, a little over four years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really sorry. And, um, and, you know, like her whole thing was like repair the world and you don't have to do that by literally repairing the world. You just have to help one person. Right. Right. And, um, you know, I think I imagine my dad really admired that my mom was a teacher. I really admired that my mom was a teacher. And I don't think either of us would have really perceived or thought of ourselves as teachers. And now all I ever think about is like we're leaving on her legacy in a way that I don't even think she would have been able to imagine. Um, and to especially as a son to be able to kind of create and provide that platform or collaborate to create that platform with your parent, literally the most rewarding experience I've ever had. And YouTube's beautiful. I hope it never goes away because all those videos are there. They're there. Yes. You know, yes. my kids, kids, kids are going to know who pops was. Um, and for me, that's just like, I don't know, it, 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 this whole business, the whole thing that we're trying to do to like make money out of this could all go to, I don't know if you guys have cursing on your show, but oh, you, you, can know, to, you can, yeah, go for it. <laughs> it could go to shit. And like, <laughs> right. that's okay because this yeah. has been the most rewarding experience. And we, we know we've impacted people's lives because of it. So anyway, didn't that's mean beautiful. to take it so, too emotional, but I don't think that no, the, the camera beautiful. is good enough to catch this, but Goosey's that was uh, yeah. in inspiring. And I think that's a lot of like, um, you guys certainly inspired us. So, you know, two people that you've certainly touched um, in a mm. meaningful way. But I will also say, or not but, but and I will also say, um, when we were talking about doing this, it was around, it was 2020 and we got into a routine of, I would come by, you know, Sunday mornings and we would have breakfast together with my mom, my dad and me, the favorite child. Yeah. Um, I have two brothers <laughs> also. <laughs> Who also think they're the favorite children. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> I'm trying to get him to admit it, uh, but I haven't been successful yet. We're, I thought maybe with an audience, it, I might have yeah. might have succeeded, but no such luck. Um, yeah. But I would come by, and we would, you know, they would make a big breakfast, and you know, we would have coffee together. I'd usually have a mimosa by myself because it's typically I'm drinking alone. <laughs> um, but we would have a great time, and we started. You know, I'm a, a sales leader for my company. Um, 
and he's in been in sales training. I mean, like in really awesome career that we used to just talk about different topics and we would find, I would be like, wow, this is like a really helpful, helpful day for us. Or, and, and then we started talking about like, man, wouldn't it be cool to do something and kind of that legacy that you talked about where we were kind of like, we'll probably never make a penny doing this. We'll probably spend money doing it, but, and who knows if anyone will ever care to listen to us, <laughs> right. why would they? But we were like, this is something so cool. Well, there's so much loss and so many people have, have lost loved ones. And I've seen, you know, friends lose their parents over the last year, um, you name it. And I'm like, regardless of what happens, I totally relate to that, Zach, because I look at it and I'm like, I'll always be able to play back episodes of us just talking together about things. And also the advice that you're probably getting from your dad now that you never knew, right? Like I, I'm like, we had to have a podcast so that you could share your wisdom after all these years. So it's, it's kind of, it's really cool. I, I totally relate to that. Yeah. The, the wonderful thing about when Zach moved in uh, last year uh, was a shortly after he had broken up with a girlfriend and it was, I, I must admit, it was some of the best parenting I have ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Helping him through that. Um, mm -hmm. First, it was phone calls for an hour at a time, several times a day, uh, when he was living in Maryland still before he, he came down to let me know that he was going to be my roommate. And <laughs> and just, uh, just, just being able to help him and to help guide him through what he was going through, knowing that, well, there really is light at the end of that damn tunnel, um, was was so helpful for me and inspiring for me. And then today, to know that, I don't know, there's over 120,000 people that subscribe to our YouTube channel. And, Wonderful. And, and that people, the comments that we get from our viewers and to the way we impact lives, it just, it really gives me um, a reason to get up and do something every day. Uh, not that I, I needed that reason, but it just fortified what I should do and, and, and the value of trying to give back a little bit of the wisdom that I might be mm -hmm. able to share. One of the um, things that I'm most proud of, um, obviously it kind of goes without saying when, when, you produced as much content as we produced back on YouTube. Like we're really proud of that. But we, we very recently, maybe it was two, three months ago, we launched a community forum and, um, and it's just join yaa.com slash community. And my dad spearheaded that. He was the one answering all the questions there. We have more people, more auto advocates, as we call them helping. But one of the channels is called success stories. Um, and it's people who have had this empowered experience and they want to share it back with the YAA community. And that I most recently shared one with you, Dad. I, I sent you um, the email, the screenshot of this woman who um, uh, her the sentiment of her comment was her husband was saying like, "Hey, honey, like you go buy the car," and she was so proud of that that it wasn't like, "Hey, you go buy the car, you the husband go buy the car." And my comment right. to my dad was, "We're breaking down gender norms." You and really are. Incredible. You are. And it's so like to your point that of having like feeling like there's meaning in your life through this. Uh, yeah. Because you see and hear the success stories uh, and you know that you're driving that impact and, you know, seeing, you know, the numbers is cool, right? Like a hundred thousand is cool and, and whatnot, but the one story that really hits home, that means the world. It, it, it's true. And, and, you know, we, we have a, um, a friend of ours, she's in her eighties and I, I was heartbroken. I was so upset. It happened um, two years ago. Uh, she had a Ford, um, I forgot, it's like a hybrid SUV, small one. And she loved it, but her, she didn't talk to me first. We, we talk all the time, but now she knows she comes to me, but yeah. she needs to go to you. But um, <laughs> she was on a, she's on a fixed income and her payment was getting a little, you know, rough. So what does she do? She drives to the Ford dealership in Wayne and they saved her. I, I'm, I don't know. You're both, you're both now know your hair standing up. They <laughs> saved her like $120 a month. You know what they did? They put her in a cheaper model of the same car that she had. There was nothing wrong with her car. Put her in a cheaper model, extended the loan payments. She's in her 80s. She's going to be paying this car off till she's like 91 or whatever it is. 
Oh my God. And I, I was, I was sick of the dog. I found out too late. She told me about it and there was nothing we could do. It was already, you know, months later, but if that, I would have marched down there and I wanted to, you know, literally like beat somebody up and I'm not a violent guy. <laughs> I would love to see you know, that. But, but, uh, to, to your, you would get your ass beat. I would. I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, the point is, it's this education. She believed them. She trusted them and they, they did wrong by her. And to your point, Ray, from you said the business hasn't changed. And I'm not saying every dealer does that. It's not the case. But why should that be? Why couldn't why couldn't someone have given her better advice? You know, why did why does she need a me? You know, and that's why you are you guys are so critically important for the everyday person who is not thinking about their car. They have their own jobs, their own hobbies or whatever it is. It comes time that they need something or they can't afford it. Well, that's where you step in. Oh, go ahead, Ray. I, I was just going to say, it, it, unfortunately, uh, in the automobile business, for the most part, greed rules the day. Mm -hmm. It's just it, salespeople are almost conditioned, almost trained to see exactly how they can maximize the amount of money they can extract from somebody's pocket, as opposed to trying to figure out the best way to serve the customer mm -hmm. so that they can be a customer many times over. Right. Um, I, I used to, when I was in the business, I used to preach to the owners that I worked for, the staff that I had, that as a business, you, you, you're going to make one of two decisions when it comes to how you're going to run an automobile dealership, you're going to, you're either going to say that you, that your dealership is in, a, in an area that keeps growing so that your business practices are such that you're going to sell each person one car because they would never come back to buy a second car because of the way they were treated the first <laughs> right. time. Right. Or you could run your business saying, I want to sell a few people a bunch of cars. And I always wanted to make sure that I was aligned and working for dealers that wanted to sell a bunch of people right. a lot of cars. Lifetime value of the customer versus... Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I used to spend, I don't know how many hours that I would communicate with the dealer principal that it's cheaper to keep your existing customers than to have to go out and replace them. So if you subscribe to that theory, and you should, because it's probably mm -hmm. not a theory, <laughs> it's right. probably a fact, <laughs> uh, then, then you do everything you can to keep your customer your customer. Yeah. And anything you do to drive them away is your fault, and it's a bad business decision on your part. Well, and, and you have no referrals. There's no way no. you can ask that customer for a referral right. anymore. So. Yeah. Well, and especially in the car buying business where that is happening, it, you don't, it, nobody lives and dies with one car, right? No. Um, you, I but mean, you, oh, go you ahead. Also to, you also have to keep in mind, like, and maybe this is just top of mind because I've been doing so much research on it recently, but a lot of cars get sold peer to peer too. I think the, mm -hmm. the stat is it's like 55 or 56 million cars are going to get sold in the United States this year. And it was initially supposed to be 16, 17, 18 million were from new cars that were sold at franchise dealerships. And Joe, you brought up earlier, there's like a shortage of cars right now. If of you're course. unfamiliar with that, just Google search car <laughs> shortage. It's, it's, it's going to be 13 million new cars mm -hmm. that are supposed to be sold this year. So that leaves the remainder, you know, 40 some odd million potentially uh, vehicles are used cars. And those used cars aren't all sold from dealerships as well. And I kind of it's a kind of akin to what Carfax did. Like there was incredible information asymmetry on vehicle history. My dad can tell you stories about selling cars before there were Carfaxes. And the motto or the thought was, why the hell would we want anyone, if I'm the seller, whether I'm a dealership mm -hmm. or a private party, why would I want anyone to know that the engine's broken? Because then they're going to, I'm not going to be able to charge them as much for it. Right. But the issue is obviously they come back a week later and the engine was broken. You've got, you've got that <laughs> pile of shit you've got to deal with, right? Right. <laughs> So Carfax comes in and says, no, 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 no. If we get rid of this information asymmetry, if we get everyone on the same page about the vehicle history, you actually get more efficiency that way. Lifetime value is going to go up over time. You're going to have less people coming back a week later. And I liken what we're doing to almost being like the Carfax, but for like the buying process, whether you're going to a private party, whether you're going to the dealership, like there shouldn't be all this siloed information. And especially when it's so episodic to your point, Christina, like 
you're going to do this multiple times in your life, but it's not going to be as often as my dad was closing deals at the dealership three, no. four, five, six times a day. How can we get the information flowing so that everyone has the same amount of information? And heck, if you have that information as a consumer, you might be more willing to, to not get quote unquote the best deal, but like you feel more confident and you feel more comfortable because you just have the information. And I think as adults, especially as I've become an adult, you're given these opportunities for like autonomy and, and authority and responsibility, like with my own finances, for example. But when you lack the information, you feel really, really shitty. Mm -hmm. So just give me the information. Like you got, you're a business, Mr. Dealership or Mrs. Dealership. You're a business, you know, person selling your private party car, but like, just give me the freaking information. So I feel like autonomous and, you know, like having control of my own destiny here. And that doesn't right. happen. Yeah, yeah. And, and we shouldn't have to learn it by making three bad car decisions early on in life and then, you know, be able to pass it on to our, to our children. And Joe, for some people that they can't recover from that, right? No. Like my dad, dad, share a story about negative equity. Like you saw people just buried and yeah, some people can get out of that, but others can't. And that's their whole life just ruined by this system that's predicated on mm -hmm. them getting Oh, man. Anyway, well, the tough, the, the <laughs> tough part has, has always been to get a customer to buy a car and live with that car. Um, but between marketing and, and everything else, um, we've created a society where even if you buy a car and you take a six month loan or a six year loan on it, 36 months in, you're going, damn, I, I, I need a new car. Well, you don't, <laughs> but in your mind, you do. And so you go in and you're the proud owner of all this negative equity. And and people used, to, I, I used to see it all the time. They just roll it from one car to the mm -hmm. next, to the next, to the next. And, and I used to try to cancel the customers. I said, you know, it's like the old car commercial. You can either pay me now or you can pay me later. But at a certain point, you're going to have to pay me. You're going to have to pay down that negative equity. You're going to get to a point where a lender is going to look at you and you go, there's no way in hell we're giving you any more money. It's just That's not right. going to happen. And, and so I, I think one of the real issues is that we don't teach any type of life skills to people in mm -hmm. high school or even college. I agree. There, there, there's no courses that say, this is how you buy a house, or this is how you buy a car, or this is what you need to look for, or this is what you need to know about credit moving forward. Nobody teaches that. And, and so people fall into these traps. And, and let's face it, dealers and dealerships teach their employees how to set those traps for the people to fall into. Exactly. Um, and and we need to change that. We we need to make it so that it's win-win and fair yep. for both the dealer and the customer. And it can be that way. Yeah. And your the way you have your what you've organized, the way you just your videos and the way you produce them and you're easy to listen to and not, and and wonderful, but also whatever information I want you've structured it that it's easy to get the, you, between listening to a few of your videos, then checking out your, you know, yaa.com and, and, and join the, the whole thing that you've done, even joining free just to get some information and the way you have it set up. I, and I'm not just saying that you really have made that as a buyer, whatever I want to find out, I don't have to watch 400 hours of your videos. I can get in and get that information. It's been, it's really cool. Well, and I'll give a, a real example. And there's a couple of things, Zach, you said something before about the woman that came on your, your subscriber or member that came on and said she had pride because she was able to go and take care of it herself and didn't need to rely on her husband to go buy the car or your dad to go buy the car. Like my first car you bought, my dad bought, I was very lucky. My second car, my dad co-signed <laughs> my third car. My husband might've co-signed. I'm not sure. Yep. So like, I was like four cars in before I bought a car myself, like completely by myself. And that was an amazing feeling today. I bought out my lease and I wrote a check. Well, a certain, I learned that you needed a certified check, but <laughs> <She's still> learning. <laughs> learning. she goes, can I write it? Can I just write a check? I said, I don't think the dealer is going to take yeah. a personal check. Dodo right? over here. Dodo bird. Yeah. $30,000. I went and got a certified check and I paid for my car and it's in my name completely. And that is something that you have pride, but I will say, I listened to your videos 
And a couple of things that like, I didn't feel nervous going into it because you shared a tidbit, um, about fees and that, you know, I knew I wasn't, I knew I wasn't, uh, buying or leasing a car. So I didn't have to think about the out the door price that I think we should talk about, because that's something that I hear friends talk about all the time. My lease payment is X and it's like, well, who cares? What are you putting down? What's the total price of the car? But that we could talk about that in a second, but you shared a tip that I thought, okay, that's relevant to my current situation because it was the buyout price. And then there was the fees and tax on top of it. So I asked the question because you guys said to, I asked, can you break down the fees and let me know any that are not taxable? <laughs> Good for well, you. Not, so, not taxes and, and well, dealer any, stuff, but right? They what said they are, any yeah. fees that oh. are not taxed, they're making a profit on. So, oh, oh, I got it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll shut up. Dad, <laughs> you need to catch up on content, it seems. I tried to criticize <laughs> so she did, but I got it. <laughs> but no, but that was really helpful because I felt like I was able to, I said, can you break down the fees for me? And can you let me know any that are not taxable or, or you know, that are taxable? And then even like with the warranty, they gave me, okay, this is the warranty. This is the amount. And I was like, okay, I'll take it home and think about it rather than, my husband calls me the ultimate consumer because I typically am the one I'm in sales for a living yeah, and really pride myself in, in being good at what I do, but I am a freaking seller's dream to, <laughs> to be a buyer. Cause I am a sucker for anytime someone, you know, like the deal, they probably mark up the price, cut it down just to tell me I'm getting a deal. So I just, anyway, I appreciate what you guys do because it's mm-hmm. simple, easy to understand terms that then you can go and use. And I, I personally did just hours ago and it, it was really helpful. And I think that's awesome. Um, that's great. And part of my drive, as I think the two of us, my dad is also an entrepreneur uh, and, and has had his own business, although maybe we can talk about that in a second. Um, Let's and, not. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe, maybe we won't. Yeah, bankruptcy is um, a wonderful thing. <laughs> Listen, you aren't an entrepreneur if you haven't. You probably aren't a true entrepreneur if something didn't fail at one point. (laughs) Definitely, definitely. Um, And so like one of the things that we've been able to produce behind the scenes, uh, like as part of our business beyond just the content, is we have live chat with an auto advocate, mm-hmm. which is like this initial manifestation of how do we put my dad in people's pockets? Um, wow. That sounds really strange, but yeah, that, um, <laughs> we need you to shrink down dad. Um, but you know, we, we have pocket live chat. Pop. Sounds worse. Pocket pop. Pocket pop. Pocket yeah, pop. Pocket, we go. coined it here. Pocket do pop. not Google search that. We have no clue what's going to come up when you Google search pocket pop. No, and we um, won't take it. You can have it. It's all yours. So. <laughs> I, I kind of like that. I think yes. it has a nice ring to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's been incredible. Call one eight hundred pocket okay. pop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Who uses one eight hundred? I don't know. I, well, I was gonna call. I was just about to dial it and see what came up. <laughs> <laughs> we have the content, and yes, a lot of people ingest and digest. And, you know, put that to, put that to use, but that it's also been great to, you know, we get phone calls from people when they're at a dealership. I remember when, when my dad and I were living together um, in Las Vegas on a Friday night, we frantically get a phone call from a woman right after one of our live streams in it, in the finance and insurance office at a dealership. Oh my God. Honestly, kind of Christina, like what you were explaining, like with the warranty um, and she had gotten a quote from YAA for, for our extended warranty. And, uh, and I put her on speakerphone so my dad could listen to this. And she's like, she put me on speakerphone with the finance and insurance manager. And he was like, who is your underwriter? And I'm like, AUL Corporation. He's like, shit, that's our underwriter too. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it's like, it's cool like to be there, to, to be there in yes. addition to providing the education too. Yeah. Pocket so, pop. So I have a, I have a, a, a st- <laughs> Write it down. Write it down. It's no. yours. Oh, don't worry. It's emblazoned in my brain. Write it down, Dad. It's yeah. pretty. It, it's got a nice flow to it. I don't think you yeah. forget pocket pop. I don't know, but I'm getting old, so sometimes <laughs> I, I leave the room and then I say, "What the heck was that? It was perfect." Yeah. Yeah. So if if we talk a little bit about the entrepreneurial journeys of both of yours for a second, and Pop, you can share what you you know are comfortable <laughs> sharing or not. But Zach, um, I've been super. First of all, super impressed. I was telling um, your dad and and my dad before we started recording here 
that, um, I, I looked at, you know, you, you've got your blog that you started at 12. I think I was still playing dress up with friends at 12 years old. So just super impressed, like, you know, how early you had just business on the brain and, you know, kind of the black market gum ring that you were running in school and stuff. Um, (laughs) can you tell us a little bit about like just your entrepreneurial journey? And I think it'd be really cool for the listeners to just hear about, you know, how some of that has culminated into where you guys are at with YA today. Thanks, Christina, for diving into some of those old things. No, it's awesome. I like to creep. (laughs) No, so, you know, I was really young, obviously. I'm 26 now, but I was really young when I started posting things about myself on the internet, but I did it with intention then, and it's really neat to see it manifest now. Um, One of the great things about YA is it's not just me and my dad. Like we have a team and we're actually actively hiring for a variety of different roles. Like we we recently raised- are you interested? (laughs) Come on, Joe. job. (laughs) (laughs) We recently raised uh, $4 million plus. Yeah, God bless you. That's fantastic. It's incredible. But like the reason I bring that up is because when I was much younger, I thought to myself, how the hell am I ever going to have any credibility? Um, I don't have a college degree, similarly to my father. And, you know, I don't really have a track record of like incredible professional like experience or, um, you know, success or accolades. And I thought, let me just start writing. Let me start like documenting what I'm doing so that then five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, the people that I'm surrounding myself with then will like see like, oh, he's not some fly by night, you know, just like a lot of my peers at my age, like I get a lot of phone calls from a lot of friends, like, Hey, I've got this idea. And then a month goes by and like, that was it. Like it was the idea. And Mm -hmm. I, I knew even at that young age, I didn't want to be perceived as that person. And the only way I could think to build credibility was to become this open book of here's what I'm up to. Here's what we're doing. And to see today, like we very recently hired our head of software engineering and recruited him away from an incredible job. And he's so excited to be a part of our team in part because of that work. Um, awesome. And, and so I have this, this saying, and we, we talk about it as like a principle for the business for YAA, but it's definitely how I live my life as well. Uh, play the long game, you know, like set aside, uh, opportunities today, kind of take little sacrifices today so that you can reap the rewards in the long run. Um, and I think that's something my dad buys into as well. And so, yeah, my entrepreneurial journey started with pooper scooper, you know, my dad taking me to the FedEx store to print out, um, flyers, but it was all, I don't know. Maybe I don't want to give myself too much credit, but I thought like, I feel kind of crazy at 15 writing some of these things, but I think it'll pay off. And to see that it's starting to is really rewarding. That's, That's all- great. Oh, go ahead, oh, no, I just want to ask this because it's something I, I believe in very strongly. And so I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I'm going to ask you the question. I'm going to ask you to validate this statement. Yeah. You have to, you know, when you're built, so you're building this business and you're, you obviously the both of you planned and, you know, strategized and figured stuff out but you have to take action dive in do it so like you started the youtube you start doing it because opportunities appear only when you're in the game doing something you you can't predict or plan so i guess i'm i'm asking you to validate that um do you agree with that that unless you dive in and start doing something then opportunities show up that you couldn't have predicted in the future, you know, and look where you look where you are, you know, that you wouldn't have had that investment opportunity because by just a business plan, you definitely. started executing. Yeah, definitely. Joe. I mean, that's for me personally, I, I think there's two ends of the spectrum, right? There's the screw a plan. Let's go execute and let's just go do stuff. And I'm definitely, I lean heavily in that direction. And as I've gotten older, I've come to appreciate the opposite end, which is the no, 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 like, you know, measure twice, cut once. Mm -hmm. Um, And Mm -hmm. I think there's validity to both. However, when you're starting a business and if your aspiration is as audacious as ours is Mm -hmm. to transform the second largest or third largest industry in the United States, you could be measuring for the rest of your life and you're never going to cut. And so having this honestly, this passion and this willingness to take a lot of scary situations and embrace them and roll with them and run with them. Yeah. That's opened so many doors and I can't thank my dad enough for being, I mean, like the lighting was so bad in that first video, but my dad (laughs) didn't seem to care because he probably thought no one was going to watch it. And now more than a million people have, and it's embarrassing for both of us, but look, we're helping people and it opened up these doors. Yes. So yes. Um, 
yeah, we definitely measured like maybe not even once, but I'm really glad that we we snipped and and, and went for it. That's wonderful. Well, the other thing is, is that, you know, the way we started was we were going to be more like a broker business. And, and quickly we realized that, well, we had too many customers and we couldn't service the customers in the, in the manner in which we thought they should be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we pivoted, or Zach pivoted um, quickly. And, and, and we, 180 degrees changed what we were going to do and, and became more of an advocacy um, for people out there and more of an educational uh, channel mm -hmm. and, and started developing all the tools that uh, most of which are free uh, that are available on the website. Yes. So, yeah. Well, and, and, and I just want to give you a, I mean, just for our listeners to understand how quickly you guys scaled. Right. And I don't know what was happening behind the scenes. So you could definitely, you know, give my, um, internet creeping a dose of reality here, <laughs> no, no. but, <laughs> but, um, I mean, December of 2019 is when your YouTube channel started, right? I mean, you really started and I, I mean, it's so to think about the fact that from starting to now 120,000 plus subscribers, um, I, I don't know how many people are working on the YAA team right now, but I mean, just looking at the bustle in your office, Zach, it <laughs> looks incredible. <laughs> so, I mean, just, I think it's, sure. it's pretty incredible to think about how quickly you guys scaled. I mean, that day one was obviously you and me and, and, uh, and shooting that first video, I think day two would have been, um, as we were starting to get traction on that first broker business, um, I'm sleeping on your couch. You're really, my dad was retired. So he was really freaking pissed off at me that <laughs> we were working, we were working our asses off, man. That was ridiculous. You remember that? Yes, I do. I remember <laughs> being retired, living at the Jersey shore and you moving in and now I'm working 12 to 14 <laughs> to 16 hour days. Again. Yeah. I, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so day, day three was me realizing, Oh shit, I <clears throat> definitely screwed up because now my dad's mad at me. We can't do it. And then, <laughs> And then, um, yeah, getting people around us to help, um, my, my, uh, business partner, honestly, Arash, um, he's been a mentor of mine and, and he's helped us build out a lot of the tools behind the scenes. And I think you're seeing like, that was one of the biggest realizations was like, my dad and I could only take it so far. Um, and you got to surround yourself with really good people who share the same vision as you. And fortunately for us, the story seems to land, you know, the idea of helping people is not too terribly hard to sell. Um, but yeah, we've got we've got a small team now, and um, it's cool. We get well over a hundred thousand people coming back to the website each month and signing up, joining the membership. Um, and I, again, I think we're just kind of scratching the surface. Unless, unless you, you disagree, pop. I like, would I think agree. There's, there's a lot more room for for improvement and and to grow this thing. Mm -hmm. Pocket pop. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> 1-800-POCKET-POP. <laughs> that's where, that's where well, Zach and you are going. Stop think, with the 800 number. You know? <laughs> I think Zach, is, this is going to be like a fetch thing for those of you that have seen Mean Girls. Scott's going to be like, Pocket Pop isn't happening. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh my God, that could be the name of the company. PocketPop.com. Yeah. You could be onto something, Dad. I, I think we're going to... We're going to have to measure a few more times before we cut on that one. We're going to, we're going to be really pragmatic yeah, on pocket it. pop. Yeah. yeah. That, that's where Zach, you just dialed back my, uh, yeah. my bold statement. He's like, no, we're going to, we're going to. He's like, we take risks, but pocket pop seems just silly. Well, I'm going to test it out on a live stream. <laughs> I, hey, I, I mean, you've got two subscribers to Pocket Pop here. <laughs> oh my God, this is an explosion waiting to happen. <laughs> See, I just, I don't think that that, no, maybe. No, maybe we no. tend to go off the rails here. We, as we set up our podcast, we're like, it's kind of like uh, an organized stream of consciousness. So you never know where it's going to go. Pocket Pop, you know. No, we, no. I, I kind of like it. I do too. So Zach is a uh, please erase this tape. And uh, it was nice <laughs> hey, no, you. I I um I fully support Pocket Pop. I don't know <laughs> what the product is. I don't know uh, how it looks or feels. But if it's anything like my dad, I'm sure it will be great joy. Would be one to many people. Yes. I agree with you. you well, well, thank you all for that. <laughs> yeah. So where do you guys go next? Like, what what are the plans for the future? 
as that we you're allowed to, to, to that yeah, speak that about. you want to share. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I can't mean, wait to hear. Where are we going next? So, I mean, one of the big things, and I mean, heck, probably in a couple of weeks here, depending on when you're listening to this, um, we're releasing um, vehicle listings. So, you know how you have to go to cars.com or auto trader or things like that um, to find cars for sale. Um, one of the big things we're working on is you shouldn't have to do that because when you go to those websites, I don't know if any of you guys have ever done this for fun. I've been doing a lot of it recently to really ex- understand the user experience. Um, you fill out the form, and the next thing you know, you're getting phone calls out, out like out the wazoo from do every it. single dealership. Yeah. It's well, exactly. like it's like the time that I accidentally made the mistake of going on Angie's list and thinking, "Oof, Oof. oh my god, I did yeah. the same thing." Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> exactly. So we're building the at joinya.com the, our listings, which then you know like how we really help people is my dad wrote all these email templates and we know the dealer's contact info. So we're building like the listings piece and it's like, okay, I am interested in this Audi, you know, Q5. Well, instead of filling out a form and getting bombarded, you can use my dad's email templates to ask them for the out the door price. And so like, we're really proud and excited for that to launch. Um, Coming after that is, you know, we, my dad and I were, were really talking about this. Like there are no, there's the roadmap to the sale is what my dad called it. Um, and it's essentially like he used to have these laminated like things that look like a road that his salespeople could take to a customer at their desk and be like, here's the car We're this is the roadmap to our sale together. And like, we're going to go through step by step. And as I learned about that, I was thinking to myself, like, that doesn't exist for the consumer. Like I, I fill out like on cars.com, like this lead gen form. And then I get bombarded. And it's like, what happens next? I don't really know. Maybe I do some research and I find YAA or but like, or maybe I have a Joe or a pops in my life and like, they help me. Right. And so the next thing that we should be have out before the end of the year here is like, no, literally here, are like the seven steps you're about to go through. And here's how you should be empowered, not only through education, not only through community, but like here are tools like templates, et cetera. Like, so we've got the listings piece coming soon. And then after that, we have the seven steps to the sale for buying from a dealership, Beautiful. the seven steps for a sale from buying from a private party. Like we, we should be able to walk you through that step by step. Um, and so we're really excited about getting both of those out because it's just the more we can leverage tools and technology and community to like, yeah, bring my dad, his knowledge to more people, the better. That's awesome. That's great. So on the car buying topic, if there was three quick tips that you would want to leave the listeners with so that they could go find more <laughs> pops, you want to share three quick tips that every person should know as they're going to endeavor into buying a new car. I will just chime in. My dad is great with three quick trips, three quick tips. three <laughs> tips. Cause he always gives like six or seven. It's the most magical thing. Well, we can't count either. So that works out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. He can't count. We're perfect. Listen to a couple well, of back if you listen to some of our episodes, episodes and we've say, tried to do a recap at the end, I'm like yeah. tip one, uh, uh, four, five, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> Dead right. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well, the first thing I would say is don't ever be afraid to walk away. If you're ever being mistreated and the likelihood is you will be. Uh, so if, if when you're in a dealership and you're being mistreated or you're asked for things that they really don't need, don't be afraid to put your foot down and say, no, you can't have that. And, and if they insist, then walk away. Never, always remember that as a customer, um, you have the ultimate power and it's a simple two letter word, N-O. So you always have the power to say no. Um, And what did I come up with on the spur of the moment that other day? You have, you have the power to say no. You have the, the power to get up and go something like that. No, 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 no. It was, you have the power to say no pocket pop in your pocket Pocket at any moment. (laughs) What would pocket pop do? <laughs> WWPD. When okay. it, what would Pocket Pop do? <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Damn it. Damn all of you. But this is a great thing. I am going to, Pops, cover your ears. Whatever. No. I'm going to make like fortune cookies for some sort of event. And we're going to be out and it's going to be like open. You're, someone's going to open their fortune cookie and it's going to be like, you must request information from Pocket Pop. And they're like, what the hell? Like, this is my fortune. <laughs> You just wait, Dad. Next time you order Chinese takeout. Oh, I, no, I, I think it should be check your pocket. Pop. <laughs> that was good. Oh, that was great. You got a future in this, Dad. I yes, think not really. 
I might have missed it, Ray, but what was number three? <laughs> okay, hell, I don't remember. Um, okay, and, and here's here's probably the most important tip you need to know. When, when you're looking to buy a car, always get a complete breakdown of all the fees and an out-the-door price. Never, ever go into a dealership and basing your purchase on your payment because salespeople are trained to say, well, what have you, what, what, how much did you want your monthly payment? To yeah, right. And you'll go, well, 400 and they'll go up to, because that's the other thing they're trained to say. And you'll go, okay, maybe 450, 475. And how much money are you putting down? Oh, I, don't know, I was thinking a couple thousand up to, um, you don't ever want to do that because if you do, they will, they will figure out how to, how to, pack the least amount of car into the most amount of most time. <laughs> for the biggest profit that they can get. So as a customer, you always want to just negotiate the out the door price, the discount on the car, what the dealer installed accessories are, the fees. And you, and, and you alluded to it earlier, Christina, if it's, if it's negotiable, it's taxable. No, if it's, yeah, if it's taxable, if it's taxable. It's negotiable. It's negotiable, right. <laughs> um, uh, even I get confused, um, but at 70, I should. Um, so if, it, if it's taxable, it's negotiable and, and just negotiate every fee to make sure that you're paying <clears throat> the absolute least amount that you can. That's so awesome. always negotiate the out the door price. That is great. That's wonderful. Now, guys, it's four o'clock, believe it or not, that Woo! hour went fast. And I know, Zach, you have a hard stop. So, um, so let me wait before what? you do that. Yes. Let me just wrap up here, Dad. You always are very See, hasty I to hit this. the button. I'm, I'm I texted. I texted my four o'clock call. I let her know I'm going to be a couple minutes late. Oh, so I apologize. I'm going to just Thank shut you. us down real quickly <laughs> with something that can be used to edit this into a nice, tidy episode, Dad. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys so much, Ray and Zach, for being with us. Uh, where can people go to find you if they want to engage with you guys more? If they want to become a member? Yeah, my dad lives in Ventnor, New Jersey. Um, <laughs> his physical address is easily discernible from his Instagram page. Yes, it um, is, isn't it? <laughs> it really is, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Um, join J-O-I-N-Y, the letter Y, A-A.com is our website. Um, my dad actually does have a fantastic personal Instagram. It's Raz's Jazz, R-A-S-I-S-J-A-Z. Um, he's afraid of water and boats, and that comes through in the captions of many of his uh, photos. So I'd recommend that as well. And I'm on Instagram myself as Shefska, S H E F S K A. But yeah, join YA.com and all the information you were saying before, Dad, about out the door price, negotiating tips. We've got all the guides, all the resources, all organized back there. And on YouTube, of course, your Advocate Alliance or YAA, you'll find us there. Thank you Wonderful. so much, Wonderful. Ray and Zach Shefska. We bow to you. We appreciate <laughs> the inspiration. Thank you for thank, uh, you thank you for just being a breath of fresh air. We hope that we'll be able to do this again at some point soon. Thank you for all of the great advice that helped me in uh, my car buying process. And I think I'm going to look into your warranty now too. Um, so thank you guys. And hopefully listeners, you guys got something. I, I know you got something out of this, whether it was inspiration from the entrepreneurial journey or just insight into how you could buy better when you're going shopping for a car. There you go. There you go. And we're going to make you listen to the end of it. And then it's really brief, you know, well, our little, our little well, statement. Yes. But thank you for having us. Thank uh, you for, thank you for, um, thinking enough of us to, to want us to participate. Oh, uh, we're so honored, honored that you were Thank willing you. to stop so. that. Be honest, <laughs> we're, in, stop we're, in. We're, we're all <laughs> in this together. Come on now. We are, we we are. in this together. So yeah. thank you guys so much. And listeners, if you enjoyed what you heard, definitely leave us a review comment. Let us know uh, that you liked the episode. Ask us questions. Please go check out Zach and Ray and subscribe to their page. And uh, we hope to see you all next week. And here's our little blurb and then the, uh, the music again, and then uh, we'll let you go. So there you go. Here we go. Wherever you are, whatever your story, thanks for spending time with us this morning. Now, go and make a difference in your world. I like it. Like that? Thanks, guys. Not That's bad, like that. right? And then we, <laughs> because I'm self-centered, I play the guitar here again. You he know, always and, uh... needs to get a plug-in for Till We Can't <laughs> band. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
That was really fun, guys. Thank yeah, you for that. This really was a much. great time. Thanks so much, guys. And Zach, thanks for hanging with us a couple extra minutes here. Yeah, we for appreciate sure, it. For sure. Uh, All right. Look forward to seeing the episode and you guys are yeah, great. Yeah, we'll let this you know. Great. We'll clue you in. Thank you. Terrific. So much. Thanks, guys. Talk to Bye-bye. you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.